Good morning. I'm David Stainbrook, the Deer and Elk Section Supervisor. Um, and today I'll be going over the goals and the objectives that we use for deer management and how that leads to the recommended analyst allocations uh, for this next season. The Game Commission has publicly identified and supported deer management goals. These guide us in making our analyst license allocation recommendations. These include a healthy and sustainable deer population, acceptable levels of deer-human conflicts, a healthy and sustainable forest habitat to provide recreational opportunities and to improve information and education. These goals are supported by both Pennsylvania hunters and the broader public in Pennsylvania. Our deer management goals and data determine our deer population objective for each wildlife management unit. For the goal of managing deer for a sustainable population, we look at fawn to doe ratios from our harvest data. We look at population trends and we look at disease such as the presence of chronic waste and disease and free ranging deer in each of our wildlife management units. For the goal of managing deer for sustainable forests, we look at data on forest regeneration and deer forest impacts. Uh, these are collected by the US Forest Service each year. And for the goal of acceptable deer human conflicts, we ask how many deer do people want using data collected by third party uh, survey company. In total, we look at over 750,000 data points each year and work through a defined decision process to determine if goals are being met and to determine the deer population objective, which is either to increase, decrease, or stabilize the deer population. And we do this in each and every wildlife management unit. So our deer management recommendations are based on a defined process. First, we evaluate if our deer management goals that I just went over are being met in each of our management units. Then we determine the recommended deer population objectives for each of those units, whether to increase, decrease, or stabilize deer numbers in that unit. Then once we've determined our population objective and identified that, we can then determine the number of analysts deer that need to be harvested to meet that objective in each of those units. And because antlerless harvests, um, and more specifically the females, um, have the greatest effect on the deer population, this is the change that we do every year. And then finally, we determine how many antlerless licenses are needed to be allocated in each of these units, um, factoring past success rates. So this can change from year to year, even if the objectives stay the same. So going through some of the data, uh, first is our, our deer population trend data. And what we see here are that deer populations are stable in most of our management units. That is shown here as the light green in our map. Um, in units 2F, 2H, and 3D, we see an increasing population trend as indicated in the dark green color. And in unit 4B, we see a decreasing trend indicated as, as the red color. Um, additionally, we look at fawn to doe ratios from the harvest. And in the units where you see the, the black angled lines, those are units where we're seeing a decrease in the fawn to doe ratio from the harvest data. Um, however, we do not see it affecting the population trends in any of these units. Um, all of those have stable deer populations, except for unit 4B, which does have the decreasing population trend, but that is on purpose. That's to, on by design because the objective there in that unit was to reduce deer numbers because of chronic waste disease. And regarding chronic waste and disease, um, in all of the units where we've detected CWD in our wild deer, our deer population plan objective is to reduce deer numbers in all of those units where we have identified uh, CWD in those wild deer. These are indicated as the red areas on this map on the right. And lowering deer populations in these units is a critical step to decrease the disease risk and the spread. The next measure we look at is forest health. So forest regeneration and deer impacts, they do vary across so state, but in general, most of the units are considered good to fair for regeneration on the left and acceptable levels of forest impact on the right. These are indicated in the light green to dark green areas on both of these maps. Again, these measures are collected by the US Forest Service. For the forest regeneration on the left, um, we actually have a few units, 1A, 2F, 3B, and 4A that are considered good for regeneration. That's where over 70% of the plots have adequate regeneration. 
um, and that's highlighted as the dark green. And in management unit 2A, which is the red unit on the left map, the forest regeneration was considered poor. And in this case, less than 50% of the plots had adequate regeneration. Um, and then the remaining management units, forest regeneration was only considered fair. For deer forest impacts on the right, they were considered acceptable, which is moderate impacts or below. And all of our units, except for 3D and 4E, indicated on the right, the units in red. Um, these were where deer impacts were considered too high, above moderate levels. And um, going back to the, to the one on the left, although 2A had poor regeneration, what you see on the right is that the deer impacts were not considered too high. For the goal of acceptable deer-human conflicts, we rely on data collected from PA residents by a third-party survey company. Um, and the results from this show that uh, most residents consider the deer population just right. So it's, it's a bland map when you're looking at it. Um, basically, everything is light green across all of our management units. And that's because we're using that threshold level of most residents or you know above the 50% level or so. When we start to look at that same information at a lower threshold, say 25%, we start to see more variation across the state with more highs and more lows. It's not that light green color everywhere. Um, one of the things to note, the one on the left is a map of the survey data from 2011, and the one on the right is the most recent survey data from 2019. One of the things we're we're noticing is these responses have changed over time um, so that we see more and more of our residents are considering the deer populations too high. So it's shifting from uh, more of the, the dark green on the left to less of the dark green on the right, uh, more red, more of the light green on the right. So what does this mean? It means that from the perspective of Pennsylvania residents, uh, deer populations have increased over the last decade. And this is also supported by the increasing deer harvest during the same time um, is, is an in index of that population growth throughout that, that time frame. However, when we look at a survey of deer hunters specifically, um, using the same questions, it indicates that most deer hunters consistently want more deer and that more than 25% of the hunters said deer populations were too low in every single one of the wildlife management units. Um, and this, this is pretty consistent across all of the past uh, surveys that we've conducted with, with deer hunters. All right, so I just went through all of the goals and all of the data that we use um, to determine if we are meeting those goals. The next step is to move through this, what looks like a complicated decision tree. Um, it's outlined in our deer management plan, um, but basically it's just the step-by-step -step, um, process to determine the deer population objective for each of our units. And so basically for each one of our wildlife management units, we step through this, this decision tree using the goals and data that we just went through. Um, and that you know, essentially you result in your objective, and that's whether to um, increase deer numbers, decrease deer numbers, or stabilize the deer numbers in each of our wildlife management units. Um, so when we go through that process for each of our units, um, it leads to the following uh, summary map here. Um, and, and so you can see here that um, it's the objective is to stabilize deer populations in most of our wildlife management units, but the objective is to reduce deer populations in nine of our wildlife management units. Um, the, the eight in the south central region are uh, because of CWD concerns, and then the two in the northeast units 4E and 3D, uh, these are both ones where we were seeing forest impacts, and actually 4E has both forest impacts and has, has CWD now. So now that we've defined our recommended objectives for the population, the next step is to determine how many analyst licenses are needed to achieve those objectives in each one of our management units. And so this is the final slide of the presentation. Um, it shows on the far right, this shows last year's allocation um, with this year's recommended allocations um, based on the deer management plan objectives and the goals. The units in red text are the same from the previous map those are the units that the uh, objective was to reduce the population, and then the rest are to stabilize. Um, additionally, we have 13 management units that are changing from seven days concurrent to 14 days concurrent, 
and you will see the allocation has been adjusted to account for those added days. Now, this typically leads to reduction from the previous year. However, in a few of the units, the recommended allocation is not a reduction from last year. And this is because either of the need to stabilize an increasing population, um, an objective to reduce populations because of chronic waste and disease or forced impacts, or from other factors. Um, and you'll also see in some of the areas where we are recommending stabilizing deer numbers that the allocations may um, increase or decrease from last year. And those really depend on a few factors such as the population trend, if the average antlerless harvest has changed, and if the number of antlerless licenses to harvest an antlerless deer has changed. Um, that concludes my summary and thank you for your time. And I'm happy to address any questions that you may have now or at a later point in time. Thank you.